What's key about Michaela is that the teachers are in charge. They're in charge of the children's learning and they lead that. And the children trust us. The teachers love them, the children love them back. I think teachers come here because they really believe in the bigger mission. They know that we're trying to transform the lives of these children in the inner city. Teachers come here because they want to change the world. We believe very much in the idea of personal responsibility. We want our children to feel personally responsible for who they are and to know that they own that. They own who they are and whoever they become, they are the captain of their souls. If they come to Michaela, they're going to become better people. They stand up proudly and say, I want to thank my mum for, for waking me up this morning and they want to thank their teacher for making some resources for them. We are the Michaela family. We recite poetry together. We sing songs together. We believe in a better world. And we do that by making sure our children develop into really wonderful adults. I love being a teacher. I don't know why everyone wouldn't want to become a teacher, really. It's the best job in the world. Ready? Get set. Go! Important for us. The, the biggest value is education is the most important for all children in school. Uh, I think everyone um, agrees with that. Can you tell us um, why is this the, the most important key element for our schools, our children, our teachers? So I would say the idea that education is the most important is actually like the, the, the guiding principle, like the goal, the, the outcome of Michaela schools is to provide a really high quality education for all children and then we have the values underpinning that supporting the best education that we can possibly give so an example yeah so my so the, an example is um parents evenings which many schools do where the parents come in and meet the teachers individually and the teachers spend 10 minutes with every parent saying oh they're good oh yes nice child but uh, is it helping the education of the child no the child isn't really learning it's just making the parents feel good uh, and, and the teacher feel tired and the, and the argument it is that if the child has issues the teachers would have already met with the family and the family knows and if the child is really really good or well, the child will know that and the parents will know it because we think the child will get postcards sent home. Mm. The child will maybe have some badges or lots of merits. So we are just repeating everything that everybody knows. Because you're talking about merits. This is a word you, you used uh, Wednesday as well. Can you tell us what a merit or a mm. demerit is? I'll try to explain in Dutch a little bit. All right. And a merit of a demerit is an... an uh, Je kunt een, een sticker halen, maar er kan ook een sticker weg. Ik zeg het eventjes wat, wat plat, hè? Maar je kan een compliment verdienen, maar je kan hem ook kwijtraken. Oké. Okay. So, um, a merit is a good point. Um, that if a child answers the question well, with a polite um, answer and a loud answer, you say, good, well done, merit. And you mark it on a list. And then a demerit is a bad point. So if a child um, hasn't been listening and you say, you, what's the answer? And they say, sorry, miss, I don't know. That's a demerit. And you say, demerit, you haven't been listening. Uh, okay, you haven't you been listening. You haven't been listening. Or is it possible that the child doesn't know? It, so, so, and, and that, that's a decision that the teachers have to make. And that's something we're always trying to hone with the teachers, making sure they make the right judgment. So what you could do is say, what's the answer? And they say, I don't know. And you say, well, what was the question? Mm. And then they think, hey, I don't know. And then you say to them, you weren't listening. And often they go, mm, yeah. sorry. So, that, so it makes it easier. You know, you want to give a demerit in a way that the child understands makes sense and the rest of the class or the rest of the pupils think miss or sir they're fair and the children actually um gen generally want to yeah. see that justice being served they think i'm working hard that child next to me 
is not playing their part. They deserve that consequence. And, and the demerit and the merit serves to show everybody. Mm -hmm. It's really important that you try to make these events as public as possible. So another thing that we believe in at Michaela <coughs> is the idea of shame. And I think quite a lot of people feel a bit guilty about shaming people. Um, but we think that if you make um, a child or an adult embarrassed by their poor behaviour, they will be less likely to repeat it. So it's serving as, I suppose, a lesson. And the children or the adults around them also think, I won't, I won't do that. It educates. Yeah, it educates it's a, children. It's a tool for education. Um, and on merits and demerits, um, they are recorded <clears throat> on a system. And at the end of the day, you can look at the merits and demerits and you can say, wow, you, uh, child, have all the merits. Well done. And they feel very proud. And you, child, you are bottom of the class. You've got many demerits, no merits, naughty child and that is the pride and shame and it motivates children to think i want to be top i don't want to be bottom and actually that it doesn't embarrass it does shame them but it doesn't hurt their well-being it just gives them it makes them powerful it gives them a choice do you want to be success or do you want to be failure that's a very very interesting point uh they have the possibility to be su successful Yes. Okay, I, I will park the, the merit and the demerit system on the side. We come mm -hmm. back later. Yes. Uh, I want to, to look at this, uh, these values again. Uh, like yes. uh, education is the most important. Eh? It underpins everything we do, or it, it's a foundation. And then you said you are the master of your own fate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said faith, but it's fate. Eh? fate. Destiny. Yes. What, what becomes destiny? destiny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that? What, what do you mean with it? You are the master of your own destiny, your fate. Well, we believe that the decisions that you make, and we believe that everybody has the agency to make decisions. To what the agency? What, what does that mean, the agency? You have the free will. You have the power. You have the power to make your own decisions. We, and we believe that children as well as adults have that power to make the decisions and the decisions that they make will decide whether they are successful and happy or not as successful and not as happy and we give children as as adults lots of opportunities to make the right decision and um, and the thing is because they are children we understand and they make poor decisions sometimes and we're constantly guiding them back and our duty as adults is to help them mm. to make the right decisions more and more over their journey at school but also you uh, said earlier maybe they maybe they just don't get it and this that is um possible but the more that you say that as a teacher oh, it's very difficult for them that they, they're not very intelligent or they have trouble at home or they come from poverty um maybe to an extent it is true maybe that is true to an extent but is it helping the child to learn if you say that no because the child thinks there's nothing i can do i just am stupid mm. if you tell the child it is all up to you 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 have the power either you can either you listen and you learn it or you don't listen and you don't learn it and they feel that that power is within them they will um, learn better. They, they, will, um, they will do everything they can to make their life better. Yeah. And, what, and we know as educators at Michaela that we're giving the, the children the best opportunity. We offer them very good education. We support them in making the right decisions all of the time. We create a learning environment that, is, that helps them to learn. Um, and we, you know, another of our values is the idea of gratitude. So we tell them how lucky they are. They've won the lottery. Get, they're getting a ticket to Michaela and we get them to realise that actually at another school, at another institution, they wouldn't be picked up on these small things. They wouldn't be pressed to take as much responsibility, but as a result, they wouldn't be as successful. They've won the lottery and we get them to understand that idea of just how lucky they are. Mm. And it does encourage them, I think, yeah. more and more to make the right decision and, and, and to learn and, and, and to be grateful for when they are reminded of the right thing to do and when they haven't done that right thing. But first I want to go back to uh, that you're the master of your own fate. 
And then you said, like, adults know, uh, know best. Eh? Adults are in charge. And we talked about it this morning, that um, we, in Holland and Belgium as well, sometimes we feel a little bit, um, well, ashamed maybe, um, to tell them, this is the right thing. You have to listen to me. I am in charge. Because it's a... Uh, uh, it's a it's a ground vision. It's a ground mission, actually. Yeah? It's it's the way you want to work with all the children in the school. How do you accomplish that value that everyone tries uh, um, uh, dares to speak up loud, to stand up straight, to look everyone in the eye? How how do you do that with with teachers? We believe it is best for a child to have to be told. This is good. This is bad. It provides structure and guidance to a child. And if you don't give them that, they are lost. They're confused. They, they, they struggle. They don't have boundaries. And the child will, will, will fail. So um, what we teach like teachers, what we teach teachers is that children need structure. Children need to be told there is a line here. And if you cross the line, that's bad. And you must stay on this side of the line. And when you tell that to a child, they feel happy. They feel secure. They feel safe. They, they know what is expected of them and they can do that and they can feel successful. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, you know, if you say to them, oh, we don't know, it's all, it's all very confusing, isn't it? And you get all philosophical with children. They, it, they aren't intellectual enough to, to understand the subtleties of this philosophy and they struggle and they, they are lost. Uh, we had opinions and we have versus uh, authority. Mm. Yes. Um, first I ask Annika what she wants to say and then I come back with the word authority, okay? Annika? Um, you are talking about uh, adults know best. Uh, so uh, we tell them what's right, what's wrong. But you also say they are master of their own faith mm -hmm. so how do you combine those two mm -hmm. i suppose we set the standard we tell them what we think is the right thing to do and then they do eventually have to make the decision whether to follow our guidance um and we try to give them feedback mm. and try to lead them on the right path um annika i think that if um, adults don't decide the standard somebody else decides it so somebody always decides the standard in school if it's not the adult it will be the bully but the most powerful child the most authoritative child yeah so a big bad kid who says i'm cool i'm gonna wear my trousers low i'm gonna you know disrespect teachers and then the other kids they look at the bully of this the, the, the most authoritative child and they say oh i need to be like him I need to follow him. Um, so someone will be in charge. Uh, someone will set the standard. Uh, it's either the adult or it's the child. Uh, sure. I think the standards are like the values. Mm. Yeah. But how, how did you, you, you take this team believing it and uh, actually doing it? Oh, it's a good question. Something I found quite, quite in an interesting sort of thing to think about is what Jordan Peterson, the Canadian academic, says. He says, do not allow a child to do something that would make you dislike them. Now, when I was in Amsterdam the other day, I went into the Albert Hein supermarket and there was a huge gang of youths outside behaving in an antisocial way. That made me feel slightly scared and it didn't make me warm to them. Now, I would want to teach the students in my care that we do not behave like that because that behavior, it doesn't, it, it, it isn't, it isn't pleasant. It doesn't make for a nice community. I wouldn't want my grandma to have to go into the Albert Hines supermarket and walk past them. So we think what behaviors, it, it, it doesn't make for a nice society. Mm. What behaviors will encourage children what, what, what behaviours will in, in, improve society? And it's yeah. things like picking up litter on the street, making sure that if there's an old person on the train, that you give up your yeah. seat for them. The idea of duty, the idea of looking after one's 
community. The idea of doing doing your work even when it's difficult. So going home and doing your homework, even if um, let's say there's not much space at home to do your homework, doing that hard thing because actually those values of work ethic will support you when you're older and when you have a job um we're trying to think about how how do you grow good people that lead that 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 provide a A good society a good society Um, i was thinking about the values and you you name a few of them and uh i have two questions about that uh how many uh values uh are in the standard of Miguel School, and um, uh, and how do you make it a, a real important uh, standard uh, for the teachers and for? The- we didn't talk about beliefs, but we talked about that you feel it in your DNA, that you feel it in your in your in your gut. Uh, mm-hmm. How do you do that? These values, yes, yes. Uh, so how many values are there? You cannot put, uh, you cannot count them because of what Linda says. This is not, this isn't a list. You know, in organizations, sometimes they say, these are our values and they have a poster with five values. It is, it doesn't work like that at Michaela. At Michaela, um, it's what we feel in our gut. Now, how do they do that? Very difficult, um, to do. Um, Catherine, the head teacher, she meets with the whole school team, all the teachers, once a week for an hour and a half every week and then she meets the newer staff so anybody who's joined the school that year she meets them the, the next day again for another hour and a half maybe not an hour and um, then we have every half terms so every six weeks we have a whole day where we, we talk a little bit about logistics about practical you know I don't know, you, you need to teach in this room, but but we spend most of the day talking about values. And when we say talking about values, she's not saying, here is our value, it is um, the respect. responsibility. And here's the PowerPoint about responsibility. She talks about the news. She talks about um, a, a someone interesting, a, a, a thinker like Jordan Peterson, who just has interesting ideas. Now, maybe we don't agree with all of his ideas, but we just talk about them and we mull them over. We, we challenge our pre-existing um, beliefs, beliefs yeah. by having those discussions. Um, and we, I suppose, we get to see somebody else's point of view. And we talk about m- maybe why that opinion is more favourable and more likely to lead to the educational success of the children we teach than the opposing yeah. view and we we it's, it's you know constantly having debates asking questions trying to make sure that the team um that are moving towards that common goal of understanding yeah why some values are more important than others yeah. because when you think about it you think what are the values that underlie each person and each argument in this discussion um do those values fit with what we think or do they not fit um it's, and she discusses it a lot. She, she describes the school as a thinking school. She says we're a thinking school. And as a thinking school, we, it, she expects us to think about everything in the news, everything, everywhere, mm. and the mm. values that mm. underpin mm. everything. Mm. Can yeah. I ask another question? What did it for you as a person when you started as a teacher? Uh, you, um, um, uh, you started and you get this discussions how was that in the beginning for you what did it do with your feeling with your mind and with your teaching we have different stories i think for me as i say i worked for a charity totally different opinions on on different values so for me it was um i was being challenged all the time um but i liked the outcome so i looked at the school and i thought this works I like thinking anyway. I like um, arguing anyway. So for me, it was quite fun to argue and argue and argue. And um, and in any case, because the you know because the because the school was successful, the outcomes were good. I was interested to see. Okay, but if they if it, if it works, why does it work? What is the foundation that causes this to work? And there is evidence. You know, I was I was confronted with the evidence 
that these values produce a good outcome. And I had worked in the charity where different values produce bad outcomes. So for me, it was just very interesting to think about that. Um, yes, it, it challenged me and I had to think, oh, I'm wrong or, oh, I believe last year it wasn't right. But I found that very interesting. Mm. And I think the, the most difficult thing for me was not not challenging my beliefs because I actually was convinced quite easily because as Sarah says you see the really successful school and when you start to realize which values underpin um, this successful school it, it makes sense but it's when you speak to your friends and family on the outside and I'm sure that some of you might have also also experienced some some discussions that aren't always the most positive with people who don't necessarily understand why you be, why are you being more strict in your school why are you changing things and people aren't very happy um and it's working out you know how to deal with that and that's what i found really really challenging and i still sometimes do to an extent um but that's why it's really important to build that community within your school so you have those support networks and so that if people are unsure um they have someone to speak to and discuss yeah. um those those potential issues with um that's 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 always a challenge for a Michaela teacher we find in in the UK I think it is the same in the Netherlands from our short visit but that Michaela values are really quite uh, different to the uh, the common value of the country it, um Catherine says that the school is a candle burning underwater so what she means is uh, we are trying to keep a flame alive we're trying to um, believe certain things where the weight of society and what society UK society believes is different and um, unless we stick together and say no 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 we believe this unless we talk about it every week and you realize okay I'm not going mad everyone else in the school believes this uh, we would be overwhelmed by society because mm. society doesn't believe what we believe yeah we believe in I think what works not what makes us feel good in the moment that's very important yeah okay we have to talk about what works huh? what works for the school and how do you prepare teachers so that it is not a belief but it's a it's a DNA it's a it's a mm. gut feeling yeah uh, it was about uh, adults know best and and we set a standard in school and I agree totally with that, that, that we learn children uh, to make better decisions as they grow. Um, but how do you cope with like double standards? Uh, in our school, we set a standard, but at home, there's another standard. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of children fighting. And when we talk to them, their main excuse is, yeah, but my father uh, tells me if they fight, uh, I learn to fight back. And if we um, give them a timeout or a sanction, uh, then, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know that the parents, they, they phone us or they come to school and they make sure that we know that they don't agree with it. So yeah, how do you, yeah because you do not want to denigrate the, the yeah. home context. Eh? You cannot say to the child, yeah, it's bad what you do at home. Uh, yeah. But how do you cope with that? I think that's, that's really good question. Very good question. There, 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 are very, there are many things that we do. Yeah. One of which we try to get the parents before they before their children join the school, and Catherine or another senior leader will have a meeting with those parents, and they will say we're very different. And Catherine calls herself the Dragon Lady. <laughs> um, and and there's a certain expectation that is made clear to the parents that if you send your child to this school you need to support us and if you have an issue with something that has happened at the school that is okay but what is not okay is making it clear to your child that you disagree with the school if this links to um to the key principle of being in charge Catherine says to the parents <laughs> we know best <laughs> she she says uh, I'm an expert, we know best, and you have to support us 100%, she says, not 97%, not I support almost everything you do, but, but except for this little thing where I disagree. She teaches the, the parents that the school is in charge. Okay. Um, um, we, you have to trust us that we know yes. best. And that, yeah. that's, that's a very, very important underlining in this, in this foundation. 
we know best because we're the professionals. We are the experts. So you yeah. have to trust us. We create a Michaela culture and a Michaela identity. And it doesn't matter what happens outside of the school. When that kid comes into our school, the Michaela standards are what counts. Um, it doesn't matter. They can be they can be thugs outside of school. They can be anything they like outside of school. I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter what where they live, what their parents say. If they are a Michaela. They're part of the Michaela community, and Michaela is top of the pyramid. We say that means Michaela is best. Um, the Michaela values the Michaela culture. We're very proud of it, and the children are very proud of it. We look smart. We behave the best. Yeah. Um, there is there are some things that, that you know are more tricky to discuss with families than others than, than other things. But here's an example. Um, we have quite a lot of black children in the school, and one thing that the black community tend to do is if they disagree with something, they go and they kiss their teeth. You might see that in your school. You might be familiar with it. And we that we make the decision that that action is rude. So if a child was to do that in our school, they would get a very big, a very action. severe punishment. And the parents might say, "Oh, but it's in my culture," and we'll say it's rude. Sometimes it's, uh, the parents do it. You yeah. meet them and they do it. And, 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 we sat and, we, and we say to them, and we're unapologetic about this, and you, and you can't tiptoe and feel shy about this, we say, if a colleague did that to another colleague, it would be unprofessional, it would be rude. And we are teaching your child to be successful in our society, mm -hmm. and we believe that this is not going to help them. And we, we might reach an impasse we might not, the family and the children and, and the school might not agree, but we have to hold the line. And if the family really are not willing to, um, I suppose, agree with us, we might say, perhaps this is not the right school for you. Yeah, you, you said it very precise. We have to hold the line. Mm -hmm. But how is it possible that we do not um, talk like you do, right? more precise more like the authority and, and much more like we have to hold the line that's what puzzles me uh wendy right uh, we often have to do with uh, threats like uh, lack of staff and people coming in and out teachers coming in and out and um, how do you keep the michaela concept consistent mm. is that also because of the trainings catherine gives you weekly and uh, gives extra attention to new staff that's coming? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think, um, first of all, the school uh, is strict not only with children but with staff. So when the school hires the staff, they are told very clearly that, um, that the expectation is that they are here 100% of the time, uh, that they uphold the school's values, and that if they are if they are letting the school down, if they aren't um, holding the line, that they will be in trouble. Essentially, um, well, they will receive quite honest feedback mm -hmm. that they probably would not have received at their previous school. And we talk about taking that feedback on board and the issue of ego. Because let's face it, all, all humans have an ego, but it's about putting the ego to one side for the sake of the education of the children, because we always think about that main outcome. And I suppose that value that we shared, you are the master of your fate, is as important for children as it is for adults. And the idea that any teacher can become a Michaela teacher if they want it enough, if they want to listen to the advice of the school, and they put their ego to one side mm. and they take the feedback. Um, yeah. and, and we give them lots of support. So um, at the start of the school year, we only have the year seven, so that's the 11-year-olds who are joining, to so the youngest. And we might have the older exam class, but they are looked after by experienced members of staff. And it's an opportunity for the new members of staff to practice with children who are very easy to manage who are new to the school themselves and we explain the Michaela way to the pupils for the benefit not only of the pupils but for the new staff.
and they have lots of intensive training and we'll do lots of practicing <laughs> the days are shorter they, they we have fewer lessons in the day so that then at the end of the school day you can train the new teachers and this lasts for 14 days 10 days 10 days 10 days um, and even beyond that, there will be lots of intensive support for new staff. They will be observed in their lessons. They will receive lots of feedback. And the people who give the feedback will practice with them mm -hmm. if there's something they are struggling with. Um, and it, it's, it, I suppose they have to understand that it will take a while. Mm -hmm. um, and if they understand that, they might be more likely to take the feedback on. We, we explain to them, you have to unlearn everything you know. Um, and we say, this is going to be really tough for you because if you've been teaching in schools for 10 years, you, what you have to realise is the things that you have been doing haven't been good enough. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's a really um, hard thing for, for new staff, but, mm -hmm. but we make sure that they're aware of this change mm. before they sign up but also Catherine is a head teacher it's set, it's it's all the values again she is in charge and she doesn't she's not afraid to do the difficult thing so if there was a teacher who isn't good enough and they've been there for a while but they simply aren't good enough they are letting the school down she will not be afraid to get rid of them and i think that some teachers some leaders they feel guilty or they they like that person uh, but she um, she's in charge and she does the difficult thing for the good of this school. Um, well, it, it puzzles me as well that we are uh, talking about a school in London which is a uh, uh, fortgezet onderwijs, eh, which is a, a secondary school. Uh, can you help us understand how to um, implement this 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 thinking, this DNA thing yeah. for uh, the, our youngsters, yeah. our um, primary schools? My thought is, um, why wouldn't it? If you believe that this doesn't work, you believe that a 10-year-old is different to an 11-year-old. I mean, why? Why are they different? They're the same children. A child is a child. Um, and the other thing you, I notice when I'm speaking to you is that the values for adults are exactly the same. So uh, we're speaking about how the head teacher speaks to teachers, teachers, how she trains teachers and how she speaks to parents. They're all the same values. Yeah. She needs to be very strong in leadership. She needs to be very clear about the, the expectations. She needs to hold the line. She needs to know that teachers need to know they are responsible for their own success. These are all the same values. If they work for adults and they work for 18 year olds and they work for 11 year olds, they work for five year olds. But the, but the other thing is that children, you know, if you're a primary school teacher, your job is even more important because, as we know, from the from from, from a very young age, the difference between poor children and their families and the, and the lack of progress that they make compared to their rich, educated counterparts is massive. And why is it that a child from a rich, educated background at age four knows the difference between right and wrong and reads books mm. and is really interested in learning and their poor counterparts are, are don't? And it's because of the lack of that clear structure. And I think that, you know, as primary school teachers, you have a really important role to play. Um. We are the group who wants to transform this concept into our schools or existing schools. Um, what kind of tools do we need um, to make the words uh, more consisting, uh, the words more heavy in the school? What, what would be our behavior? I think um, being, I, I think it's really fantastic that you're all here mm -hmm. because you evidently realise that what we're doing currently isn't good enough. And that if, to, if you were to continue doing what we're doing currently, that you would be letting down children mm -hmm. and that you're doing the right thing, not only for the children in your school, but for society. So you need to remember that because it's not always easy and you cannot lose sight of this is going to improve the education of the children in your care. And it means that when it's tough and when things seem difficult, you cannot lose the faith. You need to hold the line and you need to not make excuses. Mm -hmm. because it so curious because I want to feel it in the gut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do we have to do? Tell mm -hmm. us. What, what do we have to do tomorrow or now? Mm -hmm. <sighs> uh, <sighs> What's that? Okay. And the, but the main, <laughs> because you're saying I want to feel it in the gut. First, you feel it in the gut. 
Then you do the stuff. So you're saying, what can we do to feel it in the gut? You've got it the wrong way around. You first, you feel it in the gut and then you do the rest of it. The feeling in the gut is the, is the start. Look, we are changing the lives of children. We are doing this by holding ourselves and the children to high standards. So no excuses from any of you. Yeah, you do not make an excuse. You don't say, oh, it doesn't work in primary schools. Yes, it does work in primary schools. You don't say, oh, it's different in the UK. Yes, it, it, it's going to work in the Netherlands. Yeah, this is going to work. You can do it. Every one of you can do it. We are not making excuses. We are going to change the lives of children. It is like going into battle. Yeah, we are going into battle, and if you doubt yourself, you are not going to achieve this. Mm. You know, you know I love like- you so much, Sarah. This is so. I just, I, I really, really felt this in my gut right. because so you, you came cool. through the camera. Yeah. You, you just grabbed me in the heart, actually. Yes. and this I is- think, yeah, this yeah. is it. Yeah. This have you watched? It. Have you watched the Russell Crowe film Gladiator? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Russell Crowe, he, he's the general of the army, army. and Roman army, the yeah. Roman army. And before they go to battle, he says to them, hold the line, stay with me, yeah. hold the line. And um, you send an email in the morning, capital letters, hold the line. And you send to everybody in the school. Well, well, yeah, and, 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 and a perfect example of how we have to do, because we all feel it. I'm really sure about that. Uh, and um, I, I laughed a bit like... <laughs> Because I also feel in my gut as well um, that I find it difficult. And Mm. I think it's an excuse, but I do feel it. I Mm. find it difficult to step into my school tomorrow and run around like a gladiator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do we support ourselves in this? How do we teach each other? Addressing your staff body with your other colleagues who are in this Zoom call. Practice what to say. You want to have a few lines that to give to teachers that they can say to their classes. Um, so so it, it could be, that's not professional, that's a demerit. And because by giving staff some scripts will help to make them mm-hmm. feel as though they know what to do when they feel a bit overwhelmed. Um, you need like you practice saying um that's not good enough that's not good that's not good enough just practice saying that's not good enough i'm waiting for 100 percent. that's good one you do like this role playing so we can see what you do and what happens with me is like oh my i have to do that tomorrow but the 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 example is very helping for me Mm -hmm. uh and at the other hand um i feel a little um uh, excited or ashamed or it, it, I, it, I want to be free of that because I want to act like that. Mm. How can I be free? You, you, uh, you do it with each other first. So it will feel horrible. You feel awkward, but you just stand up in front of each other and you do it with each other. And then the next day you, you give, do it. But, you, of but you, also, you also honest with your colleagues. You give them feedback. You say that wasn't good enough. That wasn't loud enough. You didn't seem genuine enough. You didn't seem angry enough. You know, you, you, weren't, you weren't standing tall enough and you have to give that, that feedback. And then when you go home, you, you do it in the mirror. But and also, before then, you're happy for the feedback. You say, you say, thank you. You never think, oh, but it was because. It was because I haven't had my coffee yet. This is an excuse. So the first, so one, you receive feedback. Two, you, you think, thank you for the feedback. And sometimes you don't feel that in the gut. I remember when I started, I didn't feel grateful. But that's fine. You have to say thank you. Like a child says like thank a child, you. Yeah. Despite not knowing why. You just know the rule. The rule is you say thank you for the feedback. And then you take it home. And then you do the feedback. And you, in the front of the mirror, you say, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. That's- now we have to, to, to get back to that, the values. Because we don't yeah. want to uh, let our children down. We calm down that, that's, uh, that's what you said all the time. Don't want to let our children down. Um. How about the merits and the demerits in comparison to that? I think that all humans, they want to be recognised when they've done the right thing. And I think merits are really important to sort of show, show children when they've done the right thing. And they, they want it. It's like having a little sticker. Children yeah. feel really incentivized by that. Um, and it's a good way to recognise good behaviour. And it's an example for mm-hmm. everyone. Um, what we didn't make clear earlier is one demerit, that's like a warning. It does get logged um, and we would never take it away because some children sometimes try to say, oh, can I can I work that demerit off? No, 
But what they can do is behave in the future and get merit. If they got another demerit in the same lesson, that would be a 20 minute det detention. Um, and if they got a third demerit, they would be removed from the classroom because they are now disrupting the learning of others. So one demerit, it, it, it's not a huge consequence. It's just a warning. But if they were to repeat and get another demerit, they would receive a detention. It's just a small 20 minute opportunity for them to reflect um but essentially it's a way to try to stop them from from repeating it's it's the principle it's the value that of responsibility that actions have consequences and merits and demerits is just a tool to show that so you don't need to it doesn't need to be a merit and a demerit but it does need to be some tool to show that your action has a consequence good action good consequence bad action little bad consequence little warning more another bad action more serious consequence but but what's quite good about you know putting it on a system online is that then parents can be involved in their child's progress and the parent can log in over the course of the day and see how their child is doing um and i think that that's quite important you do want parents to take an interest in how their child is doing and that's a way that they can take an interest without taking up any of the teacher's time so we have to talk about the demerit and merit system um, mm. and talk about uh, how many demerits or how many merits all right mm. I, I think i think it's clear but we, we need to talk about that more often and, and 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 talk about what is right or what is wrong mm. um i want to come back to this word of gratitude oh, yeah. what does it mean and what does it mean for the michaela uh, school yeah. gratitude is being thankful and showing it um so it could be at the end of the lesson when a child leaves the lesson they say thank you sir thank you miss it could be that when you say to them oh your shirt's not tucked in you need to tuck it in they say mm, thank you or it might be that at the end of lunch you might have seen this online at the end of the family lunch children will put their hands up and they might get picked to give what we call an appreciation and I say, I would like to thank my English teacher because they taught me what this poem means today. On the count of two, one, two. And it's, it's a collective um, a gratitude mm -hmm. session. And it, it, I suppose children have to practice recognising what they're grateful for. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it will just pass them by. And it's the same with adults. Um, so we try as much as possible to point out to the children what they are lucky for and get them to accept and, and show themselves that they agree that they are lucky for these things. Well, I say gratitude is the right attitude. You know, most happy people are the people who recognise what they've got. It's not, they, the most happy people haven't got the most. It's that they recognise what they have got yeah. and they show that, you know, that they recognise that they are fortunate for it. Mm -hmm. And our children are very happy, you know. Yeah, it helps happiness. I said at the start, they're happy to teach gratitude explicitly to say you must be grateful makes a child happier is the way of working with students having an advanced development or uh, students uh, falling behind so we have different streams so there are children are put into classes according to their ability so those who are advanced will be with other pupils who are advanced so they can move through the curriculum faster and another way to support those children is we have like Oxbridge groups. So children who might be aspiring to the best universities and they talk about current affairs and they're stretched um, outside of the classroom too. And the children who are really weak, um, we might choose for them not to study, for example, French. And instead they have more time with the maths and English and they go at a slower pace. It's very different in how we look at it. Huh? We have this a uh, whole class with all the abilities in one class so we have to uh, talk about this again not today but how we do that better than we do now in our primary schools when i read your books i read a lot about quizzing and that's the homework for kids how does that work and how could we do that at a primary school um you, whatever homework you set um the way to check that it's done is to uh, to ask them the knowledge and you ask it the day the next day so that there's not a chance for them to forget it um but even in primary school i think that you could you, you, you the homework is to learn some knowledge and um the best way to learn particularly with the younger children is just um 
just testing you know um spelling test spelling test yeah and uh, so you just say you need to learn to spell these five words and then the next day you ask them to spell those five words and if they don't if they can't spell the words the, the, the worst children you know maybe the bottom two or three they you say they failed their homework they failed their quiz they haven't done their homework properly because if they continued at the same standard they wouldn't achieve the outcomes needed for them to progress to you know to, to the secondary school it, it teaches children um that the aim of their homework is to learn not simply to do some piece of work they can do the work but if they haven't got the knowledge in their head they haven't learned do you use uh, stuff like quizlet or is there do you have cards flashcards, or how do you, how yeah. do you do physical them? flashcards? they work really well it's not all about knowledge as they get older but i think at primary school particularly it would be mostly knowledge, knowledge. Yeah. yeah um we'd like to know a bit more about the merit system we understand what a merit is but we'd like to know the more practical ways like what does it look like is it something on the board or is it just for you as a teacher or mm. we have a we have a website um now this how this would work in the netherlands i don't know but that i'm sure it's possible but we have a website that the school is uh, has an account set up with um we can tell Linda about it. Yeah, we'll tell Linda. But, but as a teacher, you log the merit and you, you project it on the board. So the children are looking at the board and they see their name and you click one merit or two merit, three merit. And if they get lots of merits, they're very happy. Or you put detention on there or demerit on there. And you do that at the end of the lesson. So you, you keep a tally on paper. And then at the end of the lesson, you get up the um, website and they see it on the board. And then at the end of the day, their their class teacher, the, their form tutor goes through the whole day with them and they really want to see it. They want to know how many merits they've got. Um, and it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Actually, ultimately, merits don't translate into prizes. Um, they get a badge. Well, actually, they get a badge. The top, the top children might get some badges at the end of the year, but they don't do it for that. It's just for the recognition and being the top. Uh, we they... are a school for special needs. How do you cope with children with special needs? Um, so, as I was saying to other colleagues on the call, I am the um, the intern begeleider advocate. Intern begeleider. And... I find that my job is far easier at Michaela than it would be at another school because the the systems that Michaela has really support children with special educational needs. We have silent corridors. We have very quiet learning environments in the classroom. We have very clear boundaries and all staff consistently apply the rules and to routine. the children. And we have lots of routines. So three, two, one, slant everyone puts their hat their hands up it's a very safe predictable environment for a child with special special educational needs um and we have children who have ex you know very severe autism for example and we see that they do really well because of this um we don't treat them any differently that we have the same expectations for them we we might at the start of their journey we might do more preemption so more warning them so you're going to go into a lesson today and it, you know you've you, you weren't here yesterday so you will have missed out and it might feel not very fair but you need to realize that that's why you need to be in school every day we wouldn't say that to every child but we say that to them because we want them to be successful. So we're trying to build them up to be successful. We will have more more meetings with those parents because they'll be used to quite different things at primary. But the fact is, our children with special educational needs do far better than at any other school that they've been to. And they don't even have a teaching assistant supporting them. And it's because the Michaela rules and routines are really, really helpful for all children, particularly those with special educational needs. So I'm really excited for you working at a school with special educational needs and learning about Michaela because I think it really will help. Um, how do you think about uh, the use of uh, digital devices? We are quite anti-technology at Michaela. Um, so that means that we would never use like tablets in a lesson iPads. Um, we are much more traditional than that. Um, most second, most schools in the UK have an interactive whiteboard, but we just have a 
an old school white whiteboard that you write on um we don't think that it adds to yep. the learning and remember that our goal is high quality learning and we don't think it adds to it um that's the main thing when i started at the school they were tablets it's not um it isn't this isn't um we just hate technology this is does technology help the learning and in when in the first year they used tablets to do quizzes to, to do quizzes and they didn't work a quiz is much better on a piece of paper. So we found that technology doesn't help learning. Yeah. Um, so we now use Google Classroom to set some homework sometimes, but we try to minimise it because we don't always think it's useful. We think that when children are on the computer at home, they will be trying sometimes to be on YouTube, to be to be communicating with their friends, um, and it, not just not just talking about technology to do with learning we're also against the uh, the use of smartphones um and we have very few children especially the younger children 11 12 13 using smartphones we make it very clear to parents before their children join the school that smartphones are harmful and they they shouldn't give it to their children and we sell at the school instead a brick phone you know like an old school phone no 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 color. and no cure um, so yeah, we have a different perspective on technology to most schools. Right. Just, just very quickly, we think that uh, technology is um, harming children's brains. It's it's destroying their ability to focus, their ability to read a book. You know, because a book is boring if you have a tablet, and that's awful. Children need to read books. Um, but I was a bit curious about the whole yeah the detention punishment sanctioning. Uh, think how far do you go or what what is a detention or what punishment do you give to to like turning cut fights at the at the playing ground or um do not behave okay enough? so so a detention is just one detention is 20 minutes and they do some work but not homework um we we say that at Michaela because our expectations are so high we say that we've got a very tight fence. So the things that children try to do to misbehave would be trying to um, smirk at each other, catch mm. eyes, trying to maybe trip each other up in the corridor. So fight. So this is a that's a detention. So so because because that's a detention, we don't have to then worry about the consequence. What if a child brings in a knife? What if a child hits another child? In, in the, the corridor, in the fight, corridor, fight in the corridor. We we have had one fight in eight years at Michaela, and that is not because our that's not because our children are different to the children at other schools. It's because we have such high expectations that most children wouldn't even think to do that because they know that this <laughs> is is going to get a big consequence. However, if a child did fight and that did happen once they would receive more than a detention and they would be um, excluded for a fixed amount of time. Um, and then we'd have serious meetings with the both both families and um, the parents would have to come into school and we make them realise just how, how serious this is um, and we would write it on their permanent record. Um, but, hope, but usually you will find when your expectations get higher, the, the, the things that they misbehave uh, the things that they do to misbehave are far smaller. Because it was, um, f for me, I, I'm not sure if I speak for the group, it was uh, impressive. Uh, we had a, a lot of information. We had uh, uh, some practicing as well. You came through the camera and sometimes was overwhelming. I would love to thank you very, very much. We took uh, two hours of your time, um, but I think we have information for more than two hours. Is it okay like this for us? Yes, okay. Everyone is like, all right, let's go to lunch. And thank you so much for this uh, very impressive uh, talk with you. You're welcome. I mean, you hope to see some of you in your schools in the future. Yeah. Or you come Definitely. to, to Michaela. You'd be very welcome. Yes. Okay, the plane is ready. We'll come to you. <laughs>